Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Oh, well, weather's a bit miserable. Low, overhead, overcast. Oh, life never ceases to be interesting. <coughs> Apparently, Bitcoin is going to split into two Bitcoins on the 1st of August. Oh, it's a long story, you don't want to know. Still on course though, still on course. And then what else? Oh, what else is going on? Oh, my marquee that blew over. I've had a, we've got the barbecue on Saturday. I mean, Saturday, and no marquee. So I've got to get that sorted out today. So I'm on my way to work. I've got, you know, the problems that are associated with sorting people's teeth out, they just come for granted. Oh yeah, you're going to get those anyway. What have you got? You've got, on top of that, you've got all your other problems, haven't you? And I'm not exactly late. But then, I'm not exactly early either. <laughs> oh dear. Are you like that? Do you, are you like me? Do you sort of, do you think to yourself, oh, I'll get up early tomorrow morning and do that? And then, when the morning comes, think, oh, It'll wait. I've got this fantastic uh, cherry plum. When, when where we are, the, the farmers are very astute and they need to plant hedges. And so a lot of the hedges they plant are cherry plums and uh, some of them are very thorny. There's all sorts. There are some that, are, that don't have no thumbs on, uh, thorns on at all. Thumbs? Plums and thorns, thumbs. And uh, so if you want it to be a, like an anti-burglar uh, type barrier, you plant a thorny one. But either way, around about this time of year, July, you get the most fantastic uh, cherry plums. And they're so sweet. And uh, they're all different colours, you know, they're like from bright sort of deep cherry maraschino, cherry red to bright yellow. And they're lying all over the place. Rhubarb's doing well, picking black currant. The uh, big, uh, big old plums, the Victoria plums are fattening up. The James Grieve, the Ox Cox's orange pippins are fattening up. Pears are coming along nicely. Still got some walnuts from last November. Had some, some put some of them in the freezer. Uh, but you don't need to, you can just, if you dry them out properly, I mean, if you properly desiccate them, and it does take about three days in, in some sort of warm environment, then uh, they keep for the year. So uh, I've cut all the grass and everything. We've got a, actually got a cherry tree as well, but we never get any cherries off of that because the uh, birds have those but there are cherry orchards around where we are so if we want to we can go picking cherries there uh, you know there's someone else growing for us what else we don't do strawberries got a bit of asparagus and uh, I think that's about it granny some granny Smith you know some sort of one-off speciality apples. So, what should we talk about today? Today is the 20-something. This must be the uh, about the 24th. Of course, the barbecue is on the 29th, and that's Saturday. July is a long old month, you know. July and August. It seems that uh, in dentistry, you're almost always, you know, um, if you haven't just paid the wages, then it seems that it's about time to pay them again, you know? And the wages are obviously the biggest uh, drain, not a drain, but I mean, you know, the biggest part of your budget, aren't they? And uh, you're constantly under pressure from the staff to sort of pay them a bit more. Although I must say, the staff on they don't seem to be quite so rampant as they were 10 20 years ago 20 years ago 
the staff are always, you know, when are we getting our pay rise? When are we getting our pay rise? Nowadays, nobody ever asks for a pay rise because they're all like, when are we going to get the sack? When are we going to get the sack? So I've got to give Mrs. Thatcher credit for that. She did completely knock the stuffing out of people's demands for pay. She made an example of a various groups who uh, wanted a living wage and decided that, uh, well, actually, I think what happened, she made, made an example out of a lot of groups that were taking a diabolical liberty and uh, expecting more than the market rate. And then, and then as a result, people who were sort of had every right to expect to earn the market rate saw what happened. And now, now my staff think that if they ask for a pay rise, they're going to get mounted police around their houses. <laughs> so, so they've sort of stopped, stopped asking. Which is, you know, there's just the, the whole, the whole population of this country is cowed. We are cowed. This is, is this is a favourite theme of mine. I might return to this. You know, the why are we all obese? <laughs> because. We're all depressed and we all eat. When, when we're depressed, we eat. And we're all stuck in jobs where we're just, there's no exercise, you know? I mean, postman aside, we're all just sitting around, aren't we? In offices, uh, trying to, well, if you're salaried, trying to do as little work as possible, but just literally not really living. We're just existing, we're working and exhausted in the evenings and just existing in this country there, there's no the joie de vivre in this country is completely absent we're all just there's only one thing worse perhaps than living in this country and that would be living somewhere like Sweden or Norway where it's like this country but just frozen 10 months of the year How many times have you thought to yourself, I'd love to move, you know, I'd love to go somewhere sunny. I want to live somewhere like this, but that's sunny. You know, but the problem is that you'd have to move to France, wouldn't you? And really, would you want to move to rural France? You'd only, you'd have to set up some sort of British enclave. Or, or Spain, I mean, but then Spain, look at the statistics of Spain, right? Spain is, is something like 25% less of our, of our uh, GDP, you know, GDP in comparison, they're about 25% smaller than us. And yet their, their health service, their outcomes for serious illness are way above ours, way above ours. They have, we are, we're all miserable, fat and dying in this country. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder, was it John Locke said life was nasty, brutish and short? Or was that Hobbes? Hobbes, I think. <laughs> you know, it is still too short life in this country. Thanks to the sort of parody of a health system that we've got. Which is, you'll be pleased to know, on a par with Slovenia. In terms of health outcomes. You know, for... for for what is spent, what we get is appalling, and it's because it's the, the actual system is appalling. You know, the actual way that it's done is appalling, and uh, the only uh, calls for improvement are calls to spend more money. Well, we've already demonstrated we're getting the worst value for money anywhere, and all people want to do is get more of it. It's I don't understand this call for failure. It's call for more of the same. <laughs> that when you know that what you've got is wrong, you know why. You know, it's like it's like the economy, isn't it? Printing money, just printing money, willy nilly, is getting us nowhere. And so, what the calls are to print more money because obviously we didn't print enough money. And it's the same with the health service. We've we've got a health service that's on par with Slovenia and the the call is to spend more money buying more of it not not changing it we've got uh, pensions to think about if you're in the if you're a dental employer then 
compulsory pensions are coming in. And, uh, and why are compulsory pensions coming in? They're coming in because the, the state, having stolen people's money <laughs> for the past 70 years, finds that it has none left. It spent it all. The whole thing, the whole thing was a massive Ponzi scheme. I mean, in, in the classic sense of a Ponzi scheme where the benefits for the current recipients are paid for out of the contributions uh, of the, you know, the people contributing in respect, in, in, in a reasonable expectation of future benefits, which are no longer going to exist. <laughs> it's the dental pension scheme all over again, isn't it? It's the dental dentist paying in. You know, having having money deducted for seniority payments, in the hope that you know, as we slow down, because the dentists do, you know, that we're like professional footballers. We make our money when we're young, when when we were fast under the old piecework system. You used to. That was when you made your money. You set yourself up. You sort of got yourself a big house, etc. And then as you get older, 40s and 50s and 60s, you slow down. Your income goes down. We're the only profession where we started off with a high income when we're young and it goes down as we get older. So they brought in a thing called seniority payments to try and, well basically it was trying to encourage uh, the more senior practitioners to stay on the health service because it turned out it was only the associates that were doing the NHS work and the principals were doing the, they were going private. And so if you talk to any principal of a mixed practice and you said to him, you know, what do you, oh, we're a mixed practice. Oh, how does that work then? Oh, well, I do all the private work and I have associates that do all the NHS. You know, that was it. You couldn't see the pri the principal on the NHS. Oh, no. That you would go and you'd see one of the uh, non-UK qualified, usually, associates who's... Uh, <laughs> who's living, living in a district in some town which is like a byword for... Uh, uh, poverty and violence, but they didn't know because they'd come from uh, Bratislava or somewhere. <laughs> they, they didn't know which bits of Sheffield were the, nobody wanted to live, so they were all, they were told they were going to go and work there, and that was it. Oh, so anyway, July is a long month, so I've got to decide what to do about the pensions. So I think I mean we're doing okay. And because we've been going for a year and a half now, I can, I could adjust the wages. I probably could adjust the wages. But when you're thinking you're giving your staff pay rises, it's always tricky because, first of all, you can't take them back. You can't say, listen guys, I'm gonna give you like a, well, let's say, I would say 10% for the sake of argument, let's give you a 10% pay rise and then three months later say, actually, uh, I've had a big tax bill. I was a bit optimistic about the uh, the finances, and uh, in fact, I can't afford uh, your pay rise anymore. So I'm taking it back. They do get a bit funny about that, and that's the other thing is the unpredictability of it. You know, I mean, you're committing yourself forward for something, and you have to be sure that you can maintain it going forward. And there's absolutely because it's going to come out of your pocket if it, you know, if you run out of money. Come on, guys. Oh, I'm going. You can all screech to a stop. Yeah, and the other thing is, I mean, obviously, you've got... It's not just what you, the extra that you're paying the staff. I mean, they'll they'll be getting... Uh, they'll be getting £5 extra, but old Gordon Brown, won't he? Or whoever the... Philip Hammond, whoever it is at the moment. He'll be getting £5 extra. He's the guy who's got his hand out every time you pay five pounds he's got these hand out for another pound just remember that every time every time you get money out of your pocket I've used every time you spend five thousand pounds he's got his hand out for another thousand he wants a thousand insurance premium tax decided he decided he wanted six percent of everything that we pay on insurance in the country uh, we'll start it off at I don't know, less than 6%, I think, and then it was 6%, now he's doubled it to 12%. Now every time you pay £8 for uh, insurance, he's going to have his hand out for another pound. He wants a pound. So, and we've, so you put that together, you know, all these problems of, 
you know, the, the, the commitment on your behalf. And then, you know, and in the back of it, you're thinking to yourself, well, will they all resign if I don't give them a pay rise? You know, do you drive, how far towards the brink do you drive the bison? How, before they, do you drive them over the cliff? You know, I mean, they are mostly underpaid, the dental staff. They see you trouser in thousands, and some of them, you know, are like making do on a thousand pound a month with a family of four or something. So, you, you know, there's a strong, I, I think, you know, in, in, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no Joseph Roundtree, but I do think that there's a social obligation on us to sort of try and make sure that we give the staff a fair a fair cut of the money that's being made and not just the minimum amount. I mean, Amalak Singh, who's the old uh, chief executive of the GDPA, he was terrible in the... He was a statutory minimums man, you know? He'd like pay everybody the least that can be paid and uh, give them a, a statutory minimum holiday, minimum sickness pay. <laughs> you know, just let them have what the government says is the least that they can possibly have. And uh, I was, I've never been like that. You know, I've always tried to, how can I put it? Do more than that, you know, do more than that. So, but we've got uh, the pension thing coming up. And so, you know, you, you, there is a trade-off to be made this year uniquely between what you give them in wages and, and Philip Hammond, who's got his hand out, and uh, and what you might want to give them is a pension because you can obviously, as I say, the government having spent all the effing money has decided to put the burden of uh, trying to top up people's retirement on on employers. I mean, why not? I mean, we pay for everything else for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, everything. You know, pregnancy, you name it. We pay for everything. It all gets loaded onto. Uh, customers by by because we've become our own mini social social providers uh, if you're an employer you are really a little uh, charity you know that's what you are you're dispensing you're dispensing uh, the profits of the company and the government doesn't put anything in the government if the government puts anything in it's in the form of a rebate you know by by taking less out So, if I was to say to them, what would you want, you know, which I might do today, I'll just say to them, look, I've got a choice, I've got so much money, I've got to put something into your pensions, and I can put something into a pay rise, but where on a slider of everything into a pay rise, minimum into pensions, or, uh, or sort of less of a pay rise, but perhaps more into your pension, what would you prefer? And I know what they're going to say. They're, they're all going to say, hey, aren't they? I mean, of course they are. They're, they're all living hand to mouth. They're, this is why they've got no pensions. They don't... This is why a lot of people have to rely on the state and were told that they could rely on the state uh, because they, they have no vision of what life's going to be like when they're 65 or 68, whatever the retirement age is now. So, but it, it's a long old month anyway, July. I've got another another week, like almost a, an, an extra week from my point of view where I don't have to pay the wages. But when it comes to paying them, I, I'm gonna have to sit them down and have a serious chat with them and say, how do you wanna do it? And it's easy, it's made easier for me because they do know what the situation is, you know? I do, I don't hide the financial situation from my staff. They pretty much all know what's paid, who's paid what and everything. And and we've just had another nurse qualify, so she's going to expect to pay rise over and above, over and above, but that's fair enough. That's the deal, you know. They train, they add value to the practice, and so they become worth more to me, so I pay them more. So she'll definitely get a pay rise anyway. Anyway, I don't know, let me know how you do it, or let me know how you're going to handle the pension thing. I'd be interested to know. Right, lovely. <clears throat> I hope the weather cheers up. I hope my marquee arrives. I'll uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.